Good afternoon, not yet, but uh, it's close to afternoon. First, I would uh, thank Professor Peter for changing his mind, I should say, because initially he said no time for this doctrine of timelessness, and then he jumped into saying, yes, you can have some time. <laughs> so thanks for that. And the other uh, comment I would say is, uh, Professor Anupamji, he presented the complexity of this whole uh, philosophy of science and math. And here I'm ready to take you to the journey of subtleness. And I'm not sure uh, if I'm going to deconstruct that complexity or reconstruct it. You can decide on that. So uh, in, in context of this theory of timelessness, my first question which I have is, does time exist? and time. And we'll see in this journey, I'll try to answer this question and some more around that. This is just to give a science feeling. Uh, in Jainism, there is two different traditions, Digambar and the Shwetambar, and each of them have their own uh, theory of time. And as you just heard, uh, in Digambar tradition, time is a real concrete reality. And every cosmic space unit, there is one um, time unit embedded on it. So the whole cosmic space has time units embedded on it, like gems on a cloth, on your dress. Um, whereas in, according to Shwetambar tradition, time is actually a mood, which means pariyai. Um, every reality going through change is because of time. And in some ways, we could say time is change, or change is time and time is uh, the moods of other reality. So with that background, I'm going to take on to the journey of timelessness. I skip this. So here is a few words, and this, uh, this is in context of life forms. There was a question about life forms, and they've used three terms to denote numbers. First is kati, akati, and avaktavya. Kati is a word which means numbers from two to numerable. Akati means innumerable to infinite, and avaktavya means one. Whereas in Digamba tradition, there is slight variations in the words and their meaning. Uh, it's kadi instead of kati, and it's also kriti there. So three and more is uh, kadi. No kriti or no kadi would be one, and avaktavya is two. What we see common in these two traditions is they didn't mention zero here. The second imp important thing here is that in Shwetambar tradition, number starts from two. One is actually not counted as a sankhya. Now, there will be a problem here of language because if the moment we use the word number for sankhya, we are in trouble. Sankhya, according to the Jainist view here, uh, especially the Shwetambar tradition, uh, Sankhyati iti Sankhya, Sankhya, which means uh, which is countable, that is Sankhya, and count starts from two, not from one. So one doesn't fall into the category of Sankhya, and if I translate Sankhya as number, one doesn't fall into the category of numbers. Um, but again, we know that number has its own definition. Um, so why, uh, just a brief of it, a number when squared increases in values, and when the original number, number is subtracted from it, it is still increased value. Like if we square two, um, for example, if we square three, um, it would be nine, and if we subtract three from nine, still the remainder is six, which is a higher number, and that is where we would call. Here, what's uh, interesting to note is that, again, we do use zero as a number. I mean, there are so many mathematical calculations and stuff which, which rely on this zero as a number. So zero is a non-number and a number as well. Now jumping into my timelessness, uh, the word shunya, which I found in Bhagavati Sutra, was captivating because it talked about shunya kala. The moment it... Uh, it, it read shunya kala, I thought something about empty, I mean timelessness or no time or zero time, but it was a little different. 
it's still interesting. Here, the sutra mentions three kinds of time periods to denote the migration of beings from in and out of life form. Uh, there are three varieties. So one is empty period, which is shunyakala. Non-empty period, which is, um, actually it should have been a shunyakala, <laughs> sorry. Uh, and the mixed is a mikshkala, uh, mixed uh, time period. So the empty period is when at a particular current period from among the no inhabitants all migrate to other realm without a single remnant. So for example, there is this uh, form of life we call, like, for example, the hellish beings. All he hellish beings who are currently residing in that form, they would migrate to some other form and there is no other immigration coming, I mean, happening there, which no, no new beings are being born there. And when the whole form of hellish beings get emptied, and how long they stay in that empty period, I mean, how long is that em the period of absence of any beings in that form is actually Shunyakala. I think it's very simple, but when you say it, it feels like complicated. Uh, the other, the word Virahakala is also available in Pragyapana, which is again the same uh, word. In Jiva Jiva Bigam, we find the word Nirlepakala. Now, Nirlepakala is actually the duration which it takes to empty a life form. So, for example, if we start emptying um, all um, human beings, <laughs> wrong example, but it's fine, all human beings from the human form, and we pick each one at one moment of time, how long will it take to empty it? Some simple as that. So, the Nirlepakala actually is a process of emptying whereas shunyakala is the duration, how long it stays emptied. Now, in regards to this, um, this shunyakala concept is actually a nikshepa. It's, it's, a, it's a perspective from which the life forms are being analyzed. And according to Ohira, this concept which is there in Bhagavati uh, should have come about around 4th, 5th century AD. And her argument here is that since Nirlepakala, which is found in Jiva Jiva Bigam, must be a forerunner of Bhagavati Kala, I mean, Bhagavati's concept of Shunyakala, hence the possibility is the, it, the Shunyakala concept is around 4th, 5th century AD. AD. Uh, but according to my, my analysis is that it need not be the case that the Nirlepakala should be a forerunner of Shunyakala concept. It could have been the other way around as well. And the other thing is, if the con this nikshepa concept of uh, shunyakala or kala exists in the scripture, without the concept of shunyakala, the kala concept of nikshepa could not l run for long. So the probability is whenever this concept of kala nikshepa did exist in the scripture or came about in the scripture, that should have been the time period of this concept of shunyakala as well. Okay. So the next um, analysis is about the word which I found around this was a pradeshi. Now, pradesha actually means unit, and that unit could be uh, used for like ma matter, soul, um, space, dharmasikai, or dharmasikai. Here, the, the question is in context of time that are these souls sa pradeshi or a pradeshi? So, here the word a pradeshi, the a is not um, kind of saying, it's not about denial, but it is trying to talk about like one unit rather than like no unit. And the life forms are propounded to be multidurational or unidurational, which means like the first moment of a life form uh, and the kind of the other longer duration of the life form. Why this is important is, if I go back to the zero and one, zero is not a number from one perspective, and even one is not a sankhya. So this connects with that. This reflects that shunyakala is the duration of the absence of X. A pradeshi is about presence only in the first or one moment. The next uh, component around timelessness, which I found was this Menangianism, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right. But this is a theory uh, given by Menang, and he's an Austrian philosopher who talks about uh, 
non-existential. So we do use non-existing reality in our philosophical explanations, and that does convey the meaning or message or whatever we are trying to, I mean, why will we try to use it? So objects are existing in timelessness, which means they do not exist in space and time, but they have a very significant role to play in our world of philosophy, like the unicorns. Now, does such um, Meningian uh, jungle or Meningian concept exist in Jainism? So here's just one example. This is in context of um, Apratipati Avdhigyan. So Apratipati Avdhigyan is actually uh, Avdhigyan means clairvoyance, and apatipati means which would not decline. So a person who has this uh, non-declining clairvoyance potential, what is, I mean, what is its potentiality? So to reflect, I mean, to convey that, it talks about the person is able to observe innumerable loka pramana. So innumerable, does how many lokas exist as per Jainism? It's just one. So then this innumerable loka is actually a Meningian, I mean, reality which doesn't exist in time and space, but it has its existence in the philosophy uh, here. Again, going back to my initial question, timelessness of time. So according to Shwetambar, I mentioned that time is not actually a physical reality, uh, but it is just the modes of reality. So does time exist in this physical world as a reality? No. So can, um, so here the, the whole idea is, again, like Anna mentioned that upkara, kam, uh, upkara is one of the um, aspect or attribute of reality. And time uh, is defined as a reality or a dravya in Jainism because of upkara, I mean, the by the definition of upkarakam dravyam. And uh, hence, though it has a significant uh, position in the, the philosophical reality, it would actually be a timeless existence. But yet, it's a uh, it's very um, tricky thing, because though it is a timeless reality, its existence as a mode, or its existence as an intrinsic quality of n reality still persists. So, it's just a paradoxical thing if you look into that uh, in the other way around. Okay, so now having talked about the concept of time in, con in, in context of time, going into cosmos. Does time exist in space and time, space existence in time could be another way of presenting the question. For that, there are two terms being used, Thiryak um, Prachay and Urdu Prachay. Thiryak Prachay means the expansion or existence of reality and space. So three-dimensional existence in space is how it's been uh, identified, whereas Urdhva Prachay means existence or expansion in time. Thiryak Prachay, okay, so th the time actually, if we go by the Digambar uh, theory of time, it is existing on every space unit, which means it does have existence, but it lacks three-dimensional expansion. It is just unidimensional existence. Whereas, turning around, time lacks an aggregate form, though it is uh, there as every unit on sp every space, uh, cosmic space unit, it doesn't have a congregate form or a conglomeration or an aggregate form, which is a sikai, and so it, it lacks the three-dimensional uh, Expansion. Cosmic space have Urdhva Prachay, which means um, it exists today, yesterday, and tomorrow. So cosmos of space exists like in all three time periods, which means time cos cosmic space exists in time. But the problem comes when we analyze it that in context of supra cosmos now. In our previous lectures, we did listen that the cosmos, I mean, the space is divided into cosmos and supracosmos. So here we find that uh, the supracosmos is an infinitely expanded space without any other reality existing in it. So if nothing exists, time as well doesn't exist in it, both as per Digambars and Shwetambars. 
So can any reality exist without time is a crucial problem for Jains. Now, how do they resolve it? The Digambar smartly could take care of it because of their theory of time. Uh, Dravya Sangra tries to answer it in two, by giving two different analogies. One is, an object enjoyed through one sense renders delight to the whole person. You all agree with that? You enjoy your ice creams, it's not just the tongue. And so here it's trying to say that though the Kalanu, the, the time units are, are existing in space, uh, within the uh, cosmic space, it has an impact at the uh, supracosmic space as well, it, as simple as this. Time unit is there in every, every uh, unit of this room, right? So which time unit is really helping me survive here? Is the time unit which lies on the cosmic space where you are seated, or is it the unit which, is, which I am standing here? So here, the Digamber theory is that it's not that each unit of um, time actually helps the reality which lies on that space. It's, it works like one force. And since it works like one force, so the time unit which lies around you or within you, I mean the space which you've occupied, if it can help me, it can surely help the alokas, right? So that's one way of their uh, trying to resolve the problem. The other example given by them is um, Andravya Sangre is a bamboo touched by at one place, actually the whole bamboo moves. So Digambars survive there, but the Shwetambar do have a problem. And the biggest problem is that if for them, time is merely a mood. What would be a big problem if they would say time exists in a loka? So it's something which they need to explore or we need to explore. Okay, so now I'm going to jump into a different uh, concept. It's called Earth's Prashad Gati. Uh, okay. So um, in to understand Aspirishad Gati, we should really understand the time unit, which is called Samay. Samay is the subtlest time unit in which, which is defined as any atom, if it has to travel from here to there, like if, I, it, if there's an atom which starts from me and reaches you, and with the, the least amount of time, it could be one Samay. And this Aspirishad Gati, I'll skip this. Okay, so this Earth's Prashad Gati is uh, a travel where the, the, the theory of re relativity actually, uh, theory of space-time relativity falls. So to understand this, one simple example, if I take one hour to travel and reach my destination, making sure that the speed is like, you know, the constant without changing the speed, how much time would I take to travel half the journey? Half of the time, right? Are we all awake? Yeah. Yes, okay, good. So if it is half of the time, and giving you another situation, if a soul travels from this to the end of the cosmic uh, end in one unit of time, how much time would it take to travel half of its journey? But does there be, is there anything smaller than one unit? No. So here is where the, the theory of um, speed and relativity of, I mean, the relationship of space and time actually breaks apart. The, the, the way this is defined is that uh, Earth's Prashad means where the journey is without touching the intermediate um, atoms or space units. So literally, there is nothing like a half journey. They're not reaching to the half journey, they really directly reach to the next destination. And here, Mr. Gelda, he, Professor Gelda, he brings up this analysis where he says that this, I mean, he, he tries to define it as zero time. This is where actually I started my journey as well, but I changed it to timelessness. The state of zero time is when the time is present in the whole space. When time reaches to zero, substance or matter can stay in two or many places in the same time unit parallelly. So if the substance is here and there in the same unit, but can a substance be in two places at the same time? 
it something kind of doesn't suit, I mean, doesn't sense right, but this is how the, the theory goes. So this is something where we call it, I have called it as immeasurable um, time, or I would call it as the epistemological problem which we have. We cannot perceive that the whole notion of time there. It's, it's timeless for us. I would skip this and okay, let it go. Another concept which I found around this was Kari Mani Kari, which is a theory in Bhagavati which talks about uh, the action when started actually is the same time the action is completed. And there has been a whole lot of uh, discussion. There is a Jain theory of heretics or Ninnavad, and there there's a claim that Mahavi's son-in-law was uh, was confused by this theory. So not going into that big uh, debate, the, according to Ohira, uh, in her analysis of Bhagavati, she comes up, she mentions that the probability is this kare mani kare concept could have been there in Bhagavati earlier, but then since it could not find an acceptable uh, thing, uh, it, it did not kind of transfer or did not kind of move forward with the other text, and it, it's found probably only in, in Bhagavati. So uh, this is another um, theory of, I mean, timelessness, and one more here. I think this would be my final one. Omniscience, right? Uh, if uh, this Jain theory of omniscience is whether the enlightened soul, the Kavalin, is able to perceive all realities, all modes of realities, in the same time. So they perceive the past as past, present as present, future as future, but where, when are they perceiving it? In the now. Which means, here again, they go beyond the confinement of time. So this is another uh, way we could look into timelessness. Sorry. Finally, I tried to wrap up and see if I could come up with essence of the whole thing. I have put, the first one I've mentioned here is timelessness of reality, which could be looked into as supracosmos. And this is a con uh, cosmological concept, which, which we are talking about, I mean, the timelessness in context of cosmological concept. The second one is Meningian reals, which are actually um, reals which are absent and which is a metaphysical concept. Beyond time is where we see the omniscience go beyond the confinement of time. And this n knowing, I mean, the Keval Gyan actually is intrinsic quality of the soul. Intrinsic quality of the soul is related to transcendental time. So here, the, it, it is related to the cognitive theory, and it, it hooks up with the transcendental concept of time. Why I say this, you'll know like just after this. So the next one I mention, mention is immeasurable time, which is Asprishad Gati, the movement in one time unit from here to there or being in two places at the same time unit. This is Vyanjan Pariyai. Vyanjan Pariyai means an extrinsic action or something which is happening, uh, which is empirical, I mean, which is related to the empirical time. And this is an epistemological uh, concept and it is beyond language. So we, we could see here that the concept of time, uh, timelessness could correlate or have its own um, existence within the Jaina theory of Jaina philosophy in context of cosmology, pataphysics, cognitive theory, and epistemology. And finally, if it makes sense, um, I, I kind of presented the whole thing in a very different uh, thing, but uh, if you just look at this one here, I've, I've put this timelessness into philosophical and mathematical. It's kind of um, bridging the science of not religion and science, but philosophy and science, I would say. And here, these two, exist in this conceptual time. So conceptual time is where there is a philosophy and there is mathematics as well. And this is the marriage of, I mean, philosophy and uh, thing. 
or we could, I've just kind of briefed it, metaphysical time. Uh, metaphysics is actually having two aspects, modes and reality, existence and change. And um, in context of existence, we find the timelessness in supracosmos or the uh, Menendian uh, realities, whereas in Pariyai, of course, the absence of a Pariyai could be um, timeless. And in context of the rest is conceptual time, which we, we, I started my journey with the empty period or Shunya Nikkal Nikshepa, which is an analytical tool. The second one is immeasurable one. Um, and the third is beyond time. So these are all kind of uh, bringing the idea that there is this uh, marriage of time and space. And I'll just quickly come up with a few more conclusions or the analysis of my analysis is. Time theory in Jainism is very complex. Complexity is not just in context of its um, complex nature, but the way the theory is presented here and there with its own paradoxes and um, incompleteness is its beauty as well, because only because of that unstructured philosophical concept of time, we were able, I mean, I was able to draw into all these kind of diverse um, aspects of it. The other thing which I would try to bring is that time is actually, um, in our Shikha uh, Nirukti, it's mentioned that time is um, gross than space, which means space is subtler than time. So time is, if gross, still it has so much of complexities, and why is it so? I mean, that's a question which I um, come up with, and Finally, I would say that can anything happen with, in, in no time? I mean, anything which takes place in this uh, in figure is taking place in time. So can timelessness be really a, a possibility? So timelessness is timelessness, actually. Thank you.